Hello everyone, welcome to Higher Study Prep, a complete guideline for higher education. We are back with a thousand high frequency vocabulary series where we will learn new words, their meanings, examples, synonyms, antonyms, and finish up with one paragraph or short story to learn the usage of all the words that we are going to learn today. Today's first word is eology. It's a noun, which means a speech or writing that praises someone highly or a tribute to someone who has just died. For example, the eulogy Martin delivered at his father's funeral was so moving that it brought tears to the eyes of everyone present. The mnemonic for the word eulogy can be used as eu, which means well or good, and logy, which means denoting a characteristic of speech or language. So, in short, eulogy can be remembered as a speech or piece of writing that praises someone. Synonyms for eulogy can be encomium, pian, panegyric, accolade. Some example of antonyms for the word eulogy can be lambaste, castigate, attack. The next word is lament, which is a verb, which means express passionate grief about. For example, John Milton composed the elegy Lycidas lamenting the death of the British poet Edward King. The mnemonic for remembering the word lament can be lay mourn to an incident. Some synonyms for the word lament can be grieve, sorrow, mourn, and some antonyms can be celebrate, rejoice. Euphemism. It's an adjective, which means a word or phrase used to avoid saying an unpleasant or offensive word. For example, Gina, who couldn't bring herself to say the word death, used the euphemism took the big bus uptown to describe the death of her goldfish. Here are some more examples of euphemism. Instead of saying he died, we can use the euphemism he passed away or departed. Similarly, instead of saying the boss fired him, we can use the euphemism and say the boss let him go. The boy is handicapped can be said in a different way. The boy is differently abled. And lastly, he spent 15 years in jail doesn't sound so good. Instead, we can use the euphemism as he spent 15 years in correctional facilities. Mnemonics. In order to remember the word euphemism, we can break it apart as you, which is good, and phone, which can be similar to phoneme or sound. So, Euphemism can be remembered as anything spoken that sounds better. Synonyms for the word euphemism can be gentilism, politeness. Antonym for the word euphemism can be dysphemism, which is an unpleasant term used instead of a pleasant or neutral one. Insinuate. It's a verb which means to hint in a subtle way. For example, Robert insinuated that his friends should not take part in the conversation in the library. Mnemonic. In order to remember the word insinuate, we can break it as institute in which you ate. So that's trying to hint or imply to a person where he or she ate. Synonyms for the word insinuate can be imply, suggest, hint, or indicate. Some near antonyms could be retract, alienate. Distend. It's a verb which means swell or cause to swell by pressure from inside. For example, excess weight gained by overeating caused Mr. Maxwell's belly to distend over time. Mnemonic. For remembering the word distend, we can break it as dis, which can be similar to distance, and tend or extend, which means extend to a distance or expand or swell out. Synonyms to remember the word distant by can be expand, bloat, dilate, bulge, inflate. Whereas some antonyms can be shrink, contract, deflate. Tranquil. It's an adjective which means free from disturbance or calm. For example, the monk is meditating in a tranquil environment up in the mountain away from the noise of city to connect his mind and soul with the universe. 
The mnemonic for the word tranquil can be broken up as trail of quiet hill. Some synonyms to remember the word tranquil by can be imperturbable, placid, reposeful, serene, halcyon. Whereas some antonyms can be perturbed or disturbed. Equanimity. It's a noun which means calmness and composure, especially in a difficult situation. For example, the monk developed his ability to meditate with equanimity after years of practice and patience. Mnemonic for remembering the word equanimity can be equilibrium in unity, which means a united equilibrium in any situation that gives calmness and self-control. Some synonyms can be serenity, self-control, sangfroid, phlegm, tranquility, or poise. Some antonyms of the word equanimity can be anxiety, apprehension, or worry. Rectitude. It's a noun, which means morally correct behavior or thinking, righteousness. For example, Ruan's rectitude prevented him from lying at any situation and inspired him to remain sincere to his principles, ethics, and integrity. Mnemonic for remembering the word rectitude can be broken up as real and correct attitude. Some synonyms of the word rectitude can be virtue, morality, integrity, decency, or propriety. Some antonyms can be infamy, dishonesty. The next word is probity, which is a noun, and it's similar to rectitude. It means the quality of having strong moral principles or decency. For example, Mr. Max Archer is respected and well known for his probity as he always judges his cases on the basis of integrity and ethics. Mnemonic, the word probity can be broken up as proper integrity, that is, the quality of having strong moral principles, honesty, and decency. The synonyms for the word probity are integrity, honesty, uprightness, and rectitude. Some antonyms could be infamy, dishonesty. Deference, it's a noun, which means polite submission and respect. For example, in deference to the renowned elderly spiritual leader, the monk in the pilgrimage approached with deference. Mnemonic for remembering the word deference can be broken up as devoted reverence, that is, great respect. Some synonyms for the word deference can be respect, esteem, regard, reference, veneration. Some antonyms can be disrespect, disregard, or disdain. Guileless, it's an adjective which means devoid of guile, innocent and without deception. For example, every child is born as guileless and innocent being. Mnemonic for remembering the word guileless, so it can be broken up as guile, which is deception, and less, which means no. So, guileless means no deception or something that is innocent. Some synonyms for the word guileless can be artless, ingenuous. Antonyms could be scheming, crafty, devious. The next word is goad, which is a verb, meaning urge on or provoke or annoy someone to stimulate some action or reaction. For example, the scorching heat of the sun goaded the heart of zebras into drinking water from the river swarming with crocodiles. Mnemonic for remembering the word goad can be broken up as go and do, that is urge on. Some synonyms for the word goad can be provoke, spar, impel, or entice. Some near antonyms can be moderate or palliate. Proliferate. It's a verb which means increase rapidly in number or multiply. For example, the graph shows how the population density has proliferated with respect to time over the last six decades. Mnemonic. In order to remember the proliferate, we can break it up as pro plus life plus rate. That is, in our professional or pro-life, we should work at a faster rate to grow rapidly. That's how you can remember the word proliferate. Some synonyms to remember the word proliferate by can be flourish, burgeon, mushroom. Some antonyms can be decrease, dwindle. Abrogate. 
It's a verb which means repeal or do away with a law or right or formal agreement. For example, the biometric system was set to scan the fingerprint as a means of abrogating the access to any unwanted individual to the laboratory. Mnemonic, the word abrogate can be broken apart as abort to negate. Some synonyms by which you can remember the word abrogate by can be repudiate, revoke, ripple, rescind, negate, annul, or invalidate. Some antonyms could be approve, ratify, enact, or validate. Eclectic, it's an adjective which means deriving ideas, style, or taste from a broad and diverse range of sources. For example, the style of interior decoration in Robert's house is eclectic. Furniture from widely divergent periods are strikingly juxtaposed to create a unique decor. The mnemonic for the word eclectic can be broken as eclec plus tick, uh, which can be sounded as elective or selective, which means selective from diverse sources. Some synonyms for the word eclectic can be wide and broad, whereas some antonyms can be narrow, limited. We are now going to listen to a short story or paragraph using all the words that we have learned so far. Try to remember the meaning of each word in context to the paragraph and in case you can't remember, feel free to revise the slides before this. So here is the story. Dr. Mannan had an eclectic life as a professor. On one hand, he was reputed for his knowledge and professionalism. On the other hand, he was known for his rectitude probity and guileless nature. So when the news of his sudden death came, there was no way to abrogate the news from distending and no euphemism was enough to suppress the tragedy. As the news of his demise proliferated, his pupils and acquaintances were goaded together in his funeral and lament in solidarity. As his close friends gave eulogy and deference of his memory, an atmosphere of equanimity and tranquility was created that insinuated the unconditional love and respect he had accrued in his lifetime. Thank you for staying till the end of the video. I hope that you have liked all the contents and they are really helpful to you. Feel free to leave any comments and don't forget to share and subscribe and we will be back with more words as soon as possible.